I'm here with Susan at the uh, SSCR 24 and today is the July 24th and uh, we're here there's a break in the action there's not much going on as you can see the room's kind of empty um, they've gone back into informals today Susan can you can you explain to us first of all uh, give us your you know your your full name because I know I'm I'm not the best uh, person at pronouncing names and and could you also then tell us a little bit about where you work and why you're this week in Geneva for the SSCR Okay, I'll try. I attempt to pronounce my name. My husband says I've never got it, even after 10 years of marriage, but I'm Susan Isiko Struber. I hope I got that one correct. I'm a freelance consultant and a researcher on intellectual property, trade and development. And the reason I'm here this week is because I've provided background information for the negotiations on research education especially for the African group. So I'm here basically in my capacity as a resource person. Now can you tell me, uh, just, at a, just for people that maybe are not familiar with the situation on the ground in Africa and different countries, why it is that the African group has identified education as one of their priorities for work in this committee? One is something that may be generally known because uh, economically, Africa is way below most of the countries because it comprises most of LDCs. More than three thirds, actually almost all LDCs are found in Africa. So education and research are really a major development issue that you, as they say, you educate an, uh, someone and you give them access. And one of the arguments we've been making is that if someone is educated, they are able to come and engage in a forum like this, but they need access. The biggest problem in Africa, and I guess in many developing countries, and we've also had uh, testimonies from developed, some developed countries, is being able to access educational and research material. And here we talk of education at a higher level, not just secondary and primary, because anyone can read and talk and write their name, but you're talking of high-tech, high-level education and research. And that's why it is really a big and important issue for Africa and many developing countries. And talking of research, research has shown uh, there have been very good research on by African scholars and also doing some research, especially in the effort of providing background information for these negotiations. It shows that these are very it's a dire situation, accessing high quality research and educational material. And intellectual property, while it may, may not be the sole reason, it has a big role to play as a barrier. And what Africans are saying is that we need to find rules that are flexible and they are convenient for everybody. Not that they are demanding freelance or massive copying, they acknowledge and they want to maintain the copyright system. They're saying that if the copyright system has to be credible and they can also benefit from it, it's very important that there's some flexibility. Instead of leaving it free to free and mass copying, because the extremely tough rules, which has been so far the case, is that people stop to respect them. And unfortunately, this was happening on the ground, not only in Africa, but in many developing countries. Research has shown that people are so disparate, it doesn't make sense to keep protecting. And the question is, do we want to have a whole cake that you keep corporate as it is, or you come and negotiate and say, this is what I have, this is your cake, I want to have part of it, allow me some limitations and exceptions, then I'll protect the other part. That's basically the message of the African group here. It's not to kill the copyright system, but actually to make it work by allowing for flexibility. Wow, that's really that's really helpful in, in understanding what's going on here this week. Um, you're also a, an author, and you have a book coming out. Yes, that's right. And can you tell us just briefly a little bit about the book that you're you're, you're going to publish? The book, which is entitled "International Copyright Law and Access to Education in Developing Countries." exploring multilateral legal and cas legal solutions focuses basically on this the topic of uh, negotiations this week it shows what there is as international norms in copyright and other fields such as a bit on patents to demonstrate what has happened there and efforts to access to medicines and it shows that the rules are tight that they 
they've outlived the usefulness they are living out. They're out of the reality, so to say. The corporate as it was meant to be years ago has changed. Times have changed, uh, but the rules cannot really be used as the year for developing countries. By the way, the book doesn't focus on only Africa, for developing countries to be able to use cooperated materials. So it explains what there is as copyrighted rules, what are the flexibilities, and shows the realities on the ground. And the main point, one of the main points is to show that actually it just is not workable. But then it proposes solutions, not to kill the copyright system, but to say this is what can work, backed up by empirical research and proposes some policy and all, that's why I call it a tokokazi and also legal issues. And one of the emphasis in that book is to show that we can learn from past lessons and there is one thing that is not coming up so much even in this negotiations, the ban appendix and the protocol to the ban convention, which show attempts in the international copyright system to provide access for education and research. But then there was big resistance from owners of copyrighted material to what they thought as a subsidization of developing countries if they allow access. Just as times have changed, this the status quo remained that developing countries are seen as only users and they have to pay a lot to maintain cooperated material and they can only access illegally because they don't have the means but the question is is that's how we want the status quo to be or to change so in that book i propose some solutions not only normative like negotiation of treaties but also institutions so i demonstrate what wipo as an organization that is in charge of managing intellectual property can do and i see a message in the development agenda, which is, I demonstrate in that book, what development agenda means this, a new outlook, a new understanding of the purpose of intellectual property, and if there are lessons to take from the development agenda, and I'm saying that developing countries and the WIPO member states can develop on what development agendas Done. Not take it also, but develop lessons and say that WIPA as an organization is changing in focus. So that's what I focus on as some of institutional reform. But it concludes by saying that's not enough. It's not one solution. You need normative reform, you need institutional reform at international level, but you also need some work to be done at the ground level. And there I demonstrate what has been done in developed countries. It goes to depth to show what has been done in the United States, Australia and Canada to help access educational materials without killing the copyright industries, but also emphasize that this has to be adapted to the circumstances in the ground of developing countries. So in a nutshell, that's the summary of the book. I think it's good reading for negotiators, students, and everyone interested in this subject. Thank you very much. Yeah, and if there's anything you want to add right now before we terminate, the uh, before I'm, I'm finished here, no? No, what I would like to add is when it comes to access to education and research and issues of copyright, this forum here, where we are, the SCCR, is just but one forum, but we need to do the best at each forum, at whatever we are doing. Now we need to come up with something in, in the SCCR, and, but also at the national level to do something. Now we focus on this week. If you are to ask me what they should do, is to still negotiate legal solutions, that are normative solutions, which is the purpose and focus of this week. Thank you. Welcome.